By what name are you known? There are some who call me... Tim? Welcome to another episode of Timmy Talks, the channel where we talk old school magic. And today I am playing a patron match against patron Richard from Leeuwarden, the Netherlands. And he is bringing a, let me see, a parfait control deck to the table. Now, if you're wondering what is that, stick around. I'm going to do a deck tech discussing what that means. And I am playing with Timmy's Spellbook today, so you've probably seen this deck on the channel a few times before. It is mono blue and it features four protocol sorcerers, so a lot of Timmy's in my build. Now, if you'd like to go straight to the games themselves, you can do so by checking the timestamp below. Click on the timestamp, that'll take you straight to game number one. And here we are going to continue to discuss the decks, and I'm going to start to talk about Richard's Brew. So my opponent Richard is playing with a deck that I've called Parfait Control. Maybe when you hear the word Parfait you think about white because traditionally this deck comes from the vintage scene and the term is used to refer to a white control tap down deck. But in old school magic Parfait usually re refers to three artifacts and you can see them here on this picture. Icy Manipulator, Howling Mine and Winter Orb. And what you basically want to do is you want to tap down uh, Howling Mine and Winter Orb uh, when you tap them down, they don't work anymore. So if you play Howling Mine um, on your turn, you tap it down with Icy Manipulator, and then when it's your opponent's draw step, your opponent doesn't draw an extra card because Howling Mine is tapped. Then when it's your turn again, you untap Howling Mine and you get to draw two cards. It's, it's, it's as simple as that. And with Winter Orb, it's kind of the other way around. You want to keep it untapped during your opponent's turn, so that means that your opponent can only untap one land. But of course, at the end of his turn, you want to tap it down. You can use an Icy Manipulator for this, but you can also use Relic Barriers. So I'm pretty sure Richard is also playing with Relic Barriers. And then there is another package of control spells, and that's of course the color blue. So he's playing blue and artifacts, and I believe he's playing with four power sinks. Could be less, but I believe four power sinks and four counter spells. He's also playing with control magics and also some surrender perfreed. So he's got a pretty big blue package as well, and he's probably going to use that to control the board once he has this soft lock on the table. And then he's going to draw extra cards um, and keeping me in check with his counter spells. And I think power sync is a very powerful card in this matchup because it works so well with Winter Orb. So this is Richard's deck. Now let's take a look at my brew. I am playing with my mono blue Timmy's Spellbook deck again. And this deck is, as you probably know, it's mono blue, but there are also a lot of artifacts in this deck. And the interesting thing is there's also a big control element in this deck. So basically when you're playing with four protocol sorcerers, what you want to do is you want to control the board. And in my case, I'm using Maze of Ifs, Icy Manipulators, and of course, Counter Spells to control the board. I also play with Control Magics, just like Richard. So we're going to see a lot of those. And um, one of the tactics or the, the routes that I can take to victory is simply cloning and using my Vesuvian Double Ganger to get more Timmies on the board. So just having tons of Timmies, damaging my opponent and using my Icy Manipulators, Mace of Ifs and Control Magics to keep his, keep, keep his creatures away from me and use counter spells to counter his important spells. So that's one of the tactics. But there's also a mid-range package in this deck. I'm playing with three air elementals. I'm playing with Mahamoti Jin, so I can also take the route of just controlling the game and from that control position, trying to get card advantage with Jadam Tomes and then uh, drawing into my fatties, playing them out and just simply killing my opponent with combat damage. So that's also a route I can take. So there are basically an A and a B route to victory here. I can clone, clone my uh, Timmy's and I can ping my opponent to de uh, death or I can play bigger creatures and use combat damage. Of course, I can also combine the two. So in this way, I guess Timmy's Spellbook is kind of a mid-range control deck. And for me, usually the early game is the toughest to be in. So in that way, I don't really have to worry um, with the early game because the deck that I'm facing today is not a very aggressive deck. On the other hand, maybe uh, the deck of my opponent is simply better at controlling the board than I am. And if that's the case, then it's going to be very difficult for me. And remember, once an artifact has been cast with my Timmy Spellbook deck, I cannot really get rid of it. So I do have those icy manipulators to kind of manipulate how, you know, a winter orb is going to work and how a howling mine is going to work, but he will also have icy. So I kind of predict that this is going to be a very 
complex and difficult control match. So it's going to be very interesting if you like this type of magic. Okay, so um, let's go to game number one and, and see how this is going to work out. Game number one, and we have Richard sitting on the left here playing a Black Vice with his Parfait Control build, and I'm sitting on the right with my Timmy Spellbook deck, Mono Blue, with a lot of artifacts as well. So there are some similarities here between these two decks. Look at that, another Black Vice. This is going to be very painful for me because I have a slower deck. So this is kind of what I fear. And paying two, I just want to empty my hand here, playing a city in a bottle. I don't think it's going to have a big effect against the Richard's uh, deck. Maybe he's playing with Surrender Perfreed, so that can help. And because of the Winter Orb, I can only untap one blue mana. So Winter Orb and Black Vice is a really nice classical combination here. And I can play at another basic island. I just have to pass turn here. So things are not looking good for me already on seven. Let's see if Richard is going to play something. He's probably just going to choose to uh, to keep his cards on hand. And, and he probably has a counter spell. I mean, a power sink would be fantastic here as well. Just waiting for me to play something out and power sink it. Look at that. I'm going to three life and I haven't really done anything yet. So this could be a very short game. I kind of estimated these games to take very long because we're both playing control. Maze of if not great here. And I think I'm dead next turn, to be honest. Tapping two here, I'm playing a Relic Barrier. And there you go. There is a Mana Drain. So that means that I get some mana and I, I also get rid of a card in my hand. So I think, to be honest, I think... Oh, Richard's actually countering that one. Okay, <laughs> I missed that one. I was just looking at my screen. He's countering my counter spell. Well done here. Uh, what I wanted to say is I think it would have probably been better for uh, Richard to just do nothing, actually, because I'm, I'm killing myself here. So, I mean, he's allowing me to play out that counter spell, and he's basically given me another turn. But I don't think it's going to matter much. And there we see that Parfait mechanic working, using a Relic Barrier to tap Winter Orb on my end step, meaning that he can untap everything. And that's, of course, very sweet when you're playing Parfait. That's exactly what you want to do. Now, I'm on one life. And he says, you know what? I'm just not going to play out anything. And I'm let, I'm going to let you kill yourself. And that's exactly what happened here. So the two vices, absolutely killer. At least I get to start now, which means that the vices are not as strong. But I'll really have to look at my sideboard and try to figure out what I can do against these very strong artifacts. So um, let's continue to game two and, and see what I uh, came up with. And of course, what Richard came up with as well. Maybe he's going to board some spells in also. Game number two. And uh, wow, I mean, hopefully I can last longer than five minutes. That was just crazy. At least I'm on the play. That means that the vices are not going to be as strong, starting with the basic island passing turn here. And uh, Richard does the same, playing my second basic. Remember, we're both playing with a lot of counter spells. Richard has more than I. But, um, you know, it does mean that we can see some counter wars here. And I think that's actually what's happening here. We're not really playing out anything. We're just keeping our counter spells up, attacking you for two with the Mishra's Factory. Uh, Richard going down to 18, passing turn here. And I'm fine with this as long as I have a counter spell in hand. And I think we both have the same tactic because it looks like Richard's going to cast something, but he has two blue up to protect whatever he's going to cast. So that's going to be interesting. And there's a Howling Mine. Tempting for me to let this resolve drawing two extra cards. On the other hand, Howling Mine is an important part of Richard's plan. The thing is, if I counter it here, he probably has a counter spell to back it up. Then again, we could just ex exchange counter spells. I'm not sure if that would be a bad deal for me, but I choose to draw the extra card and waiting for a better moment to use my counter spell. Tapping in into a soul ring, attacking for two again, trying to put some pressure on Richard, forcing him to play out his hand. But I mean, he's got five blue mana and the Parfait package isn't very expensive to cast. And there we see a Surrendip of Free playing a counter spell on the Surrendip. Which is interesting because I am playing with two City in the Bottles, but maybe I've boarded those City in the Bottles out because I didn't see them. I didn't see any, any Arabian Night creatures in game one, but I didn't really see anything in game one because that was just that was just five minutes. Uh, playing a desert here, choosing to go for my air elemental, and that was probably my plan since the shard is all tapped out, so he couldn't counter that one because he needed his counter spell to protect his surrender for free. So that means he's taking damage, and I've got a nice four four. And there we see that parfait tactic. Ooh, 
Ooh, this is also a nice play by Richard at Winter Orb. So that's going to put me in a lock here. Remember, he can tap down his Howling Mine with his Relic Barrier. And that means that I only tap one and he gets to draw, or I only draw one and he gets to draw two. Interesting. On his end step, playing an Ancestral, or sorry, a Hercules Recall. And that means that Richard will have to put his artifacts back into his hand. And that means that I can untap as usual. So this card came from my sideboard. And he wants to play it out, but he can't because I did it on his end step. And I can swing in if I want to now with the air elemental. That's exactly what I do. I'm just trying to put pressure on Richard, I've kind of changed my tactic here. I'm being more of the aggressor because I think late game when, when Richard has everything going for him, um, he's going to benefit more than me. And let's see what he can do. He's got a lot of artifacts in hand, so he's probably going to play them all out again. And then I have the problems, but maybe I have some counter spells and I can counter something. So he's first going to play an Icy Manipulator. And this is interesting. Am I going to counter this? Looks like I'm not. Remember, I also play with copy artifacts. There's a Relic Barrier. I mean, this is bad news for me. How can I deal damage now? I'm animating my factory and I want to declare my attack step. And he's tapping my air elemental. So both my creatures are tapped. But he doesn't have any blue mana left to counter. But it looks like I have nothing to, to play. Interesting here. I thought maybe I was doing this whole thing so that he would tap out and I could play another spell. Tapping two here, having so much mana left. I mean, whatever I counter, I'm sure he can just play another counter to counter my counter. Playing a Relic Barrier, another one. And Relic Barrier is, is really, it's a strong card in old school because there are just so many uh, artifacts being played in old school and it's only two to cast and just tap and it taps an artifact it's a very simple tool but very useful and oh, okay I thought we were going to see an icy manipulator instead we are seeing a chaos orb and there is a power sink interesting he's paying five for that I can actually pay that cost but it does mean that a lot of my a lot of my lands are tapped here and so he will probably cast a um, Winter Orb next turn. Attacking here because he's tapped out. So at least I can hit him for four. He's going to 11. And this is kind of more of the control match that I anticipated. And he's tapping my Chaos Orb, but I don't think I have to tap my Chaos Orb to use it. So that's not really going to have an influence, is it? It is actually, you do have to tap the, the Chaos Orb. So it's actually a pretty good choice, a pretty good tactic here from Richard because then I cannot uh, use my Chaos Orb in response to him, for example, casting a Winter Orb. So I'm actually right now checking um, if he's correct. And you're absolutely correct, Richard. And this is a very good play uh, because when he plays out a Winter Orb now, it means I have to wait until my untap step before I can activate. Uh, my Chaos Orb. So here we see the Winter Orb. That was as to be expected. And there's the Howling Mine. So now we're kind of to see, now we see those those parts return that I sent back to his hand from the Hercules Recall a while ago. And they're back now. And that means he's got his card drawing engine going. Um, I'm going to untap my stuff. And he's of course going to respond by using the Relic Barrier, tapping my Soul Ring. Am I going to use the Soul Ring now to activate my Chaos Orb? And if so, what am, what am I going to hit? And I think I'm telling him I'm using the 2 mana to activate my Factory, perhaps? This is hard to follow. Playing another Island, not using my Chaos Orb yet. Interesting here. What is my plan? And now he is tapping my Factory pre-combat and he's tapping my Air Elemental pre-combat. And what am I going to do? I mean, if I destroy... Okay, I am going to use the Chaos Orb. And I am going to flip. But what am I going to flip? What am I going to do? So I believe I went for his Howling Mine. Because I don't want him to draw more cards. So let's see if I hit. Bam! And that's a hit. That's a nice flip. 
That's a nice flip. So the Howling Mine at least is gone. And then so is his card advantage. Let me know in the comments below what choice you would have made. And this is an interesting card. You're playing my Sage of Latinum. Now remember, I can sack artifacts in exchange for cards. And that's not really such a bad idea, considering that my opponent has two Relic Barriers, so I cannot really use my artifacts anyway. On the other hand, the artifact mana is also valuable, because it does untap as normal. Oh, and look at that. They should just quickly passing turn here. And let's see what I can do here. It's deciding not to tap any of my artifacts in my upkeep. And now I'm going for an attack. He's tapping my air elemental and then my sage is coming through. So it's going to 10. And after that, in my second main, I'm casting an icy manipulator. Oh, and this game is <laughs> this game is getting more and more complicated by the minute because that mean, means that if he doesn't tap my icy now, and he's actually power sinking it. Ay, 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 ay. Ay, 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 ay. And that is. Oh, mana drain. Okay, that is cool. I didn't see that mana drain coming. That means that I have. Oh, and this is again, I remember. And we, we looked. The thing is, I, uh, I know these rules have been playing Magic for a long time, but I forget them. And of course, uh, when you counter an X spell with a mana drain, um, you don't get the X, you just only get the one blue because that's the casting cost. At least that's what I think, let me know. So you see that, that dice there on my deck that says three mana, that's because the power sink was cast for three. But I don't think it's correct, I think it should be one. So just one mana that I will get in my next main phase. Yeah, exactly, so I'm changing it now. But let, let me know in the comments below if I'm wrong, I believe we checked it. Um, and I believe it was correct. Anyway, let's let's just continue with the game. I think this is a huge blow for uh, for Richard, for my opponent. On the other hand, I'm completely tapped out. I have I'm facing still facing the Winter Orb next turn because I don't have any mana to use my IC on his Winter Orb. So it's not it's not that great. My tactic right now is basically trying to give my opponent uh, Richard as many targets for his Relic Barrier as possible so that I can just get some damage in. That's basically my my tactic at this point. So he's passing turn, I'm untapping, I get to choose one land, so I choose my factory just to get some more pressure on the board here. I've got one mana, I'm probably gonna spend it on animating the factory. And that's exactly what I do, so it's now a 2-2. Two -two. And then I'm gonna declare attack and then Richard can respond, so before attacks, he can tap. So he's tapping my air elemental, tapping my factory. So I, at least I get one damage in here. Going to nine. And I'm playing a Maze of If. And Maze of If is actually quite interesting here because that means that next turn I can untap my Sage if I attack with it after it has dealt damage. So end of turn, Richard, you're very clever. You are um, tapping uh, my uh, Icy. And I think that's very important. Because if I have an untapped IC in his turn, that's going to be very difficult for him because then I can tap down his Winter Orb and untap all my lands. So let's see what's going to happen. And I want to attack again. So he's taking one from the Sage, tapping my Air Elemental again. End of turn, tapping my IC. And he's tapping my Mox Sapphire passing turn. So this is really kind of like a game of chess, but I feel like... I'm, I have the upper hand here because I'm on 20 and Richard's on 8. Then again, he is playing more control than I am. So, you know, I've lost against control decks when I was on 20 and they were on 1. So really 8 is kind, kind of a lot of life when you're facing a control deck like this. Untapping here the Sapphire and the Icy. And declaring my attack again. So he's taking another damage, going to 7 playing a Mishra's Factory, so that means that next turn, if I choose to untap my Mishra, um, I have two creatures to attack with, so that's actually pretty cool. And of course, the difficult thing is a Mishra's Factory cannot be countered, so there's not much that Richard can do, choosing the Soul Ring for his other target. Ooh, and a Strip Mine, so he can take, actually can take care of that untapped Mishra's Factory. I'm kind of expecting him. 
uh, he's probably waiting for me to first invest some mana into it and then he's going to get rid of it. That's probably better. Drawing it to Laria there and using my Soul Ring mana to activate both of my factories, declaring attack here, tapping my Air Elemental, tapping down one of the factories, using that in response, I pump the other factory and then of course he's going to use his Strip Mine. He actually could have used his Relic Barrier as well, choosing to go for the Strip Mine. Makes sense, sensible choice. And he's taking another damage, at least from the Sage. So that means that slowly but surely, um, he is going down. I mean, he's on seven life now. And it's hard work. It's really hard work to get this damage in against the D-Shard. I think this Brew is very interesting. And I remember playing against him and saying, where's your stasis? And he said, well, actually, there's, there's not a stasis in this deck. I'm just playing with the Parfait Softlock. In combination, you know, the Power Sync Winter Orb combination, uh, playing with the Relic Barriers and, and that whole package. And I'm just controlling the board that way. I don't really need a stasis. So I thought, that, I, I just think this, this brew is quite interesting. And it's very budget friendly, by the way. So you do see that Richard is playing with the Ice Age uh, Icy Manipulator. So I think that is actually the only very expensive card in this brew because then you have to buy the Unlimited Icies. Uh, but of course, to try it out, you can you can definitely just use the Ice Age and, and see how that goes. And look at this. I'm playing another Air Elemental. Aye, 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 a power set. Ooh, Counterspell. Will there be another one? Oh, Force Spike. Oh, that's so nice. I didn't even know he... That's really cool. He's Force Spiking it. Oh man, and I invested so many resources into, into casting this air elemental. And look at that, completely tapped out again. Well, I, I mean, I have the maze of if. Oh man. And here he's playing another winter orb. And this is actually a very good play when you're playing against white. I've, I've made this mistake before where I had a winter orb in hand, kept it in hand, to possibly reach seven mana to activate my Library of Alexandria, not not realizing that my opponent has a disenchant, so he said, end of turn, disenchant your Winter Orb, and then he could untap, and I, and I lost the game because of that. So it's, it's very good just for security, uh, for insurance, to just cast that extra Winter Orb here. And interesting to see that I'm not using my Maze of Ifs to untap my Sage. I think that, that would be a better decision here. Just so that I have an untapped Sage and I can always sack it. Oh, look at this. Interesting. He's choosing not to tap down my Icy Manipulator. That means probably because he has a double Wind Orb. But then I can tap down his Icy Manipulator and then he's in trouble because I, I can deal 5 damage. And I think that's that's what's happening here. Oh, I am very, very lucky. I am very lucky, sir. Oh, man. So Richard, for some reason, he forgot to tap down my IC manipulator. And that gave me a window to hit him for five. Wow. Okay, so that, ladies and gentlemen, means that we are going to game number three. Game Number three, and who that was an intense second game. I mean, that's just, it's so interesting how magic works. If you look at the first game, it was just Black Vice, Black Vice, Winter or boom, and I was dead. And then you look at that second game, and it was grinding, 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 waiting for one of us to make a mistake. I was lucky with Richard's mistake, so I could kill him. But, I mean, that was a tough match. And it looks like uh, Richard is taking a mulligan here. He is on the play, of course, and I have I have no idea how this is going to end. I must say, I, I think Richard's deck, the Parfait, seems to work really well with the counterspell capability because you can defend with what you have. And what I really like about the Parfait structure is that the artifacts that you need are cheap. I mean, yes, you need two parts. You need a Relic Barrier uh, to tap down your Howling Mine or a Relic Barrier to tap down your Winter Orb. But all those artifacts are pretty cheap to cast, so it's easier to cast them and having a counterspell to protect um, to protect whatever uh, you're casting. 
And especially when you're on the play, you're kind of ahead so you can get your first piece out early. And um, of course, a Howling Mine is a really nice first piece to, to play out because your opponent is not very likely to, to counter that or to do anything against that yet. And then when you play your Relic Barrier, barrier for example, you can just protect that with counter spells and power sinks. Really nice. So it, very interesting to see here. Uh, Richard's going to keep this one playing a basic island. And I guess I'm lucky. No Black Vice passing turn here. I'm playing a basic island as well. And there is a factory and there is a Howling Mine. So accepting the mine, not even being able to counter, by the way. Oh, and I really liked it, that uh, that force spike uh, of Richard in game, game two, taking care of the air elemental. That was a very sweet play. I didn't see that coming. Uh, play my second blue pass turn here. Or am I? Oh, I actually have to discard, of course, because of the Howling Mine, discarding a beautiful Vesuvian double ganger. And he's going to swing in for two. Interesting. And he's taken that extra card because he forgot to draw it from the Howling Mine. And I'm saying that this is interesting because he's not keeping two blue open. So he's kind of telling me, you know, you can cast whatever you want. Maybe because he wants me to, to tap. But I'm refusing to do that. I'm just keeping my counter magic in hand. And I'm actually willing to discard. And this is pretty annoying that... Um, that strip mine there because in this this scenario he's going to strip one of my islands and he's going to play black vice this is nice probably going to counter here but then he can counter spell my counter spell and there we see the force spike again and that force spike works because of that strip mine so this is a nice victory for richard here and this means trouble for me playing a factory and just passing turn here i mean i do have a lot of a lot of cards in hand, so I should be able to start just playing stuff out. And it's playing another Howling Mine, really going, oh, and there we see a Mana Drain, again a Force Spike, but this time I can pay one. So... Okay, and he's taking it back, he... Okay, so we're going to see... Yeah, so we're going to see that the Howling Mine is countered. And he's taken back the four spike. But of course now I know he has the four spike in hand. Now remember these are these are really friendly games that we're playing. It's 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 also a way to test kind of our decks and to discuss things and scenarios. So I'm drawing two here. And taking the damage from the vice, going to 14, having those two mana from the mana drain. Can I play out something? Do I want to play out something? I guess I do. And playing out an air elemental. So just like what I did in um, in the second game, I'm playing a little bit more aggressive than I'm used to. And he's just going to pay for the four spike uh, because I know about it already. And he's probably going to follow up now with a winter orb. There we see the winter orb. And that's really going to set me back. That combination of black flies, howling mine, winter orb. A really nice uh, classical combination that I remember from when I just started Magic. Um, and because this is something you saw and it works really well because you can see that right now I have to draw two cards because of the Howling Mine. I can only untap one land. And luckily I have that Air Elemental to put some pressure on. But as soon as the Air Elemental is gone, I really have nothing to go on. I'm already on 12. Not sure how much cards I have in hand. And we can, we can see by the damage I'm going to take next turn, there's another island. If he has a control magic now, I mean, I have two blue open to counter, so maybe he doesn't want to. And that's, of course, is the thing. You always have to think in the back of your mind, okay, he's got counter spells. Okay, how many does he have? But for me, it's even tougher because Richard has four spikes. He has power sinks and he has counter spells. So, I mean, that's a lot of counter magic. And it looks like I took the full amount of damage, so I have a full hand of seven. Having to discard down to seven, actually taking, discarding the tome, not really needing to draw any any more cards than I'm already getting. And there's that control magic. And we see two blue open now, so Richard has his counter spell. And I mean, I'm gonna counter anyway, knowing what he's gonna do. There you see the other counter spell. But I mean, what if he's bluffing? 
And even if he's not bluffing, at least uh, Counterspell is gone. And look at this interesting choice on his end step. I am playing the Hercules Recall. Maybe that's going to allow me to... Ooh, will we see a Mahamoti? Mahamoti Jin. I love it. And hopefully, if Richard now has a second control magic, I'm toast. But if he doesn't, maybe I can still win this one. Let's... Oh, no. Oh, dear. Jeez. <sighs> yeah. Yeah, this is... This is... I mean, this is what can happen. This is what can happen. Going to five. And, and, and the most annoying part of this is that I only have my time elemental to help me here. Uh, but time elemental is really difficult to use when you're facing a winter orb. I mean... And I, I think this is game. I don't think I can actually win this. Taking care of his island. Attacking. Okay, playing a sage. Passing turn. And I'm, I'm gonna die. This is it. And that's it. Uh, I'm killed by my own creatures. Well done, Richard. Well done. I wonder if you've boarded in extra control magics, by the way. Maybe you can let me know in the comments below. Um, good game. Good game. Thank you. Very exciting here. So that means it's a 2-1 uh, victory for the Parfait control deck today. Well done, uh, Richard. And that was the match for today. That was today's episode of Timmy Talks, the channel where we talk old school magic. And if you would like to support the channel, you can do so by liking, subscribing, leaving a comment, clicking the notification bell. All that helps. So thank you for doing that. And thank you for watching this video because that also helps. And I hope you're enjoying the content, the old school magic content. And um, yeah, if I only, if I could have kept... Oh, if I could have kept my Mahamoti Jin. But it was an interesting deck, I must admit. Interesting deck to play against. And like I said in the intro, budget friendly as well. So if you like this kind of deck setup, you know, you can actually brew one yourself. It's not that expensive. Um, if you want to support the channel financially, you can do so now as well. So you can check out my Patreon page and then you can support me and you can support the show. Talking about uh, Patreon, let's take a look at the patrons. Let's go to the end scroll. Ik het als fikker te samba gezien.